want to be when you were growing up? A fireman? Police officer? Maybe a movie star? Want to know what I wanted to be? A ninja. Yeah, or at least fight ninjas is my main occupation. For the most part, if that's what you wanted to be, we had loads of outlets during the karate craze because of arcade games like Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja. Man, I love this game. Eventually, Bad Dudes would see an NES release, which most gamers viewed as an extremely butchered port and most considered a pretty terrible game. For me, just like the arcade version, I loved it. But why? Well, to truly understand why I had such an attachment to it, we have to go back to the days of Little Halfbit. Like a lot of kids, I was pretty rebellious when it came to learning in grade school. I, however, took it to a whole other level. While many kids did their homework reluctantly, I didn't do it at all. After a while, people around me started to catch on and notice I was behind in many things like my reading level. Naturally, this caused my mom to be concerned and she began taking me to a place called Britannica after school. So basically, it was a school after school in an effort to bring me up to speed with the rest of my classmates. At that age, the most important thing to a kid is their playtime with their friends. Now that I wasn't getting that, I began to get pretty depressed. My mom took notice of this and in an effort to keep me focused on the goal, she said she would put $10 in a jar every night that I went to Britannica and said I could use it for the one thing I wanted the most, the Nintendo Entertainment System. What a kick-ass deal! So I was in without any argument. I focused on my work and the $10 bills were stacking up. To top it off, Britannica offered a math contest where the winner would get a $100 gift certificate to Toys R Us. I put all my energy into this contest because it was based on extra bonus homework. During that time, I can't even remember focusing on anything else. During that final week of Britannica, I won their math contest. See, that's me. Within an hour of this photo, my family and I went to Toys R Us along with that jar of money and we finally got the Nintendo Entertainment System. That night, my sister and I picked out a large variety of games. Among those games was Bad Dudes, so in a nutshell, of the several games we got that night, I have a tremendous attachment to them. So to me, Bad Dudes for the NES is nothing short of awesome. Let's start with the premise. It's probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen. The president of the free world has been kidnapped by ninjas. Why? Just because. Yeah, just because. Now this guy talking to beginning is supposed to be a secret service agent and he's asking you if you're badass enough to go save the president. Well apparently I am a badass considering the CIA, our army, or even just standard police officers aren't going to help you at all. Why? What, do they got something better to do? Are they looking up Welcome Back Cotter reruns or maybe surfing the internet for funny kitty cat photos? Excuse me, do you have some flavor? <laughs> you funny kitty cat. Right away you're fighting ninjas because the streets are just crawling with them. Blue ninjas are what you'll see most of the time and they just do your basic kicks and whatnot. Grayish ninjas will either throw ninja star at you or toss spikes onto the floor. Red ninjas will drop knives, nunchucks, and even the occasional Coca-Cola. Those three types of enemies are what you're going to see most throughout the game, but you do get quite an assortment of other types of baddies mixed in with the game as it progresses. Your first boss battle, for example, is Karnov. Yeah, Karnov, the fat guy from this game. In Karnov, he's an ex-circus strongman who decides to go kill a bunch of monsters and collect treasure. Pretty cool game, but hard as hell. So what is he doing here? Hell if I know. The instructions mention his appearance in the game as being a mystery. My guess is Karnov is on hard times and ninjas are offering big money to kill guys wearing black tank tops. I'm bad. 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 You also notice pretty quickly that the graphics and sound are obviously not on par with its arcade counterpart, but that was expected back then. You get an assortment of attacks and they all work pretty well. One of the more common complaints is that the controls were considered bad. Personally, I just don't see it. I think it's very fluent and responsive. Maybe you could argue that I've adjusted to it after all these years, but even as a kid first playing it, I thought it controlled great. Another complaint people have is how often you see through all of your enemies where they sort of do this ghosting kind of thing on screen. 
See, back in the world of 8 bits, this was very common to see when there was too much crap on the screen. On top of that, many enemies, including yourself, have a strobing, stuttering effect as you move about. It's much worse when you're actually playing it, and I'll be honest and say it, if I stare directly at my main character for too long, my eyes do start to bug out. My personal complaints have to do with a couple levels where the game takes a break from the action to slowly bring the bottom of the stage into view. What is the game having to load? It's a cartridge! All of the information is right there, why is it loading this slow? There was even one part where it did it when I was trying to pick up a can of coke for health. I can't even replenish my health during this? It's like the game is mocking you! Regardless of the negatives, this game is still satisfying. You'll fight on top of trains, trucks, inside sewers, forests, and you can't forget about the epic boss battles. You've got a green ninja who can clone himself, a ninja midget who clearly idolizes Vega from Street Fighter 2, a Borg from Star Trek who defies gravity, a guy using a grapple hook as a lasso, and a monk who's an expert in the art of ballet. They're all dedicated to trying to kill you. One ninja is so dedicated to his task, he literally sets himself on fire and comes after you. What kind of hate does one have to harbor towards someone else that they set their own body on fire? It's unthinkable. That's gotta be like the highest level of hate to ever exist. That's real dedication to your anger. What do people hate nowadays? What is it, Justin Bieber? Is that the cool thing to hate right now? But you don't see anyone bursting into flames around him, so you can't hate him that bad. Okay, so here's the new deal. I don't care what you're protesting or what you're whining about unless you're willing to set yourself on fire like a man and give someone a hug. Otherwise, you're not dedicated enough. Which means when this episode ends, I'm going to set myself on fire and hug everyone that ever used the acronym You Only Live Once. Anyway, the final stage is just an endurance round of basically fighting all of the bosses in one go. One thing I find kind of fascinating is that Karnov is now this bluish color after you kicked his ass the first time. Referring back to the Karnov game, in the original title you could only get hit once and that was it, you died. But the American NES version let you get hit twice before dying, so when you got hit the first time you turned blue just like after Karnov is defeated the first time in Bad Dudes. <laughs> that's kinda, that's kinda stupid useless trivia I guess, N never mind. Well, after all that, you fight David Bowie's cousin on a moving helicopter, and you save the president who gives birth to one of the most famous classic gaming end screens out there. I don't need to comment on anything. Just take it in, folks. Take it in. I will say I would love a t-shirt of this. Sadly, there was never an official sequel to Bad Dudes, but what we got in its place was really its spiritual successor. Two crude dudes! According to the box, we're now pushing 8 megabits of power. What does that mean? Well, it means our bits just became megadier. The setting is New York suddenly experiences a bunch of explosions because some mad scientist was messing with chemicals or something, and it produces a bunch of evil mutants. Over the course of about 20 years, a gang named Big Valley moves into this dystopian future to take over, and our government's plan A is to send in two really big guys to take out the opposition. Makes sense, I mean, why would we ever use the military for something like this? Before we get started, let's take the time to define what crude means. It's in a raw or unprepared state, unrefined or natural, lacking in intellectual subtlety, perceptivity, rudimentary or undeveloped, lacking finish, polish or completeness, lacking culture, refinement or tact. Doesn't sound too promising, does it? Well, don't worry, because this is pretty damn good. Now that's what I'm talking about. This game kicks so much ass it'll make you want to slap your mama and call your neighbor's cat a mother -father. Let's talk about the controls first. I was happy with how the controls were in Bad Dudes, but in Two Crude Dudes, they improve them in every facet of the word. Everything is so smooth and you have double the moves you did in Bad Dudes. One thing that you can still do is this headbanging move. I don't know why they've included that in both games since there's no purpose, but I still love it. Instead of ninjas, you fight all sorts of weird guys. You've got your typical generic punks, fat midgets who dry hump you, tanks, Jake the Snake Roberts, these guys that cling to the walls like Spider-Man and poop green piles of liquid ass, pyros from Team Fortress 2, guys with partial sickles for arms, rhino men, and even werewolves. Like what the hell is all this stuff? 
The one I hate the most are these green dogs that suck your nipples. I am not making this up. That's what they're doing. And when they get a hold of you, you can't move. Look at this situation. They're taking turns on me. And look at your character. What is he crying? Other than the strange inclusion of the booby nibbling, the big thing that sets this game apart from the Bad Dudes game is a great amount of emphasis is put on the ability to pick things up. Most of the environment you can lift up and throw, and I do mean most of it. Whether it's objects or just enemies altogether, it doesn't matter. You can pick it up and toss it. It actually does more damage to do this, so you do find yourself lifting things more than punching and kicking your way through this game, and it never seems to get old. One thing I find funny is when you beat a boss for each stage, you do this cool little pose. A lot better than hearing. I'm bad. Also, the way you can pick up things that you can swing. Look at this. Who the hell holds something like that? I mean, can you imagine if you picked up everything this way? Oh, marshmallows! Even though I love this game, there's still a few things I find pretty annoying. Why is it every few minutes there's a pile of crap in the way that I have to punch and kick to break? It just stops the action and it gets tired really fast. I mean, come on, get this out of here. I've got things to lift. Or how about this part? This flying thing that drops off enemies. I kept killing them and it kept bringing back more and more. This never ended until I realized you can jump up and catch this thing in the air. But there's nothing indicating that's what you're supposed to do. So the game won't let you move on until you do this. A helpful hint would have been nice. They stuck with the theme of Coke cans replenishing your health, but why does it take so many to fill up your health now? Each time you drink a can, it'll either move your health bar just a teensy bit or it won't do anything at all. In Bad Dudes, you just picked it up and you were done. Much better. For the final stage, it's just like Bad Dudes in the sense that it's just an endurance round. You fight all of the previous bosses you killed in one shot. After the werewolf, you see the scientist who basically looks like Dr. Wily from Mega Man, and it starts kind of a dramatic scene for a game like this. <laughs> Is this supposed to be the end boss? <laughs> what the hell? It just lets you beat the hell out of him. Eventually he does turn into whatever that is. It's like some kind of lizard thing. After you beat him, he turns back into himself, you teabag him in the face, and you win. The end screen is okay, not quite as epic as Bad Dudes was. Let's see, we beat Bad Dudes and we beat Two Crude Dudes. By my calculation, that makes me one bad motherfucker. So let's all have a burger! Ha 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 ha!